Hi there, welcome. Welcome, friend. Welcome to Homekeepers. How are you today? I'm so glad to be with you. Hope things are going well in your household because that's what we're interested in, really, is your family. And that's number one, I think, for so many people. And hopefully, we're helping you along the way and we get feedback from you, which we so appreciate. And uh, we're kind of all on the same page, aren't we? We love our family, no matter what they're doing, we are praying for them, and some of those are prodigals, but they're still sons and daughters, and we pray them right back, right back home. I had a guest on yesterday. His name is Joe Turnham. He is from Alabama, and he, uh, I was so involved in the conversation and the book he's written, I asked him to stay over. So I taped another interview with him. I hope you heard the first one. But we talked about his book, Leading from Our Knees. And you know that I have gone through hundreds of books and uh, varying books, varying subjects and all, but this one has really grabbed me and I have been reading it ever since he was on last time. Leading from Our Knees, that's what Jesus did. Jesus was always on his knees praying before some great big decision and this is perfect for pastors and anybody in leadership but it's perfect for a family because if you're a mother you're a leader if you're a father you're a leader and so I taped a second interview with him I think you'll enjoy it and I'm going to join Stephanie we're going to fix yogurt chive biscuits I thought about biscuits you know they're like a blank canvas you can kind of a ordinary taste but then you can fix it up any way you want this one has yogurt and chives in it, and we'll give it a taste and see if we can recommend it to you. Before I join her, no, though right now, America is in so much turmoil. Lived a long time, never seen it like this. And uh, this is a book we've offered before, but I really encourage you to order it. America at the Crossroads by Max Lucado, or by George Barn, I'm sorry, uh, who is a statistician. And he keeps stats on the church and the world and what's going on as far as the Christian experience is concerned. I think it's information that you should know. And the information's on your screen, box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or uh, call 1-800-229-0059. I think it's very important for us to keep up with what's going on. The Bible says that the sons of Ishikar understood the times and... If there's ever a time we need to understand what's going on, it's right now. So I hope you'll order that book. And I've joined Stephanie now. How are mm -hmm. you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. This, these smell really good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I was late getting here this morning, and she had it already done. But so. truth be told. Truth be told. Okay. So you're supposed to put all the dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to cut in the butter mm -hmm. and then put the wet ingredients. My mind was a Where? million different places this morning. I was thinking, oh, I put in the dry ingredients, put in all the wet ingredients, <laughs> totally forgot to put the butter in oh. initially. So then I put it <laughs> in <laughs> after. So we'll see. They look okay. We'll see if they we'll taste We'll find okay. out. Okay, so I have two cups of all-purpose flour. Mm -hmm. I have one tablespoon of sugar, two mm -hmm. teaspoons. Oh, this has Oopsie. been sitting here for a while. Oh. In Florida, <laughs> it kind of lumps together. Oh, my gosh. Is that sugar? That's crazy, yeah. Mm -hmm. you want all it's these? frozen because it's so cold in here. Yeah. Yeah. Two, um, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda. There's salt. A half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of dried there oregano. Goes. Okay, just so slap I'm gonna, it. Yes, just slap it. So I'm just going to mix those up. Then I'm going to cut in the, dry, the butter, the cold butter, like you're supposed to. You know, when I saw this recipe, I thought, how? Many ways can you get creative with a biscuit. Yeah, and yogurt, yum, mm -hmm. and chives, mm -hmm. such a good taste. But I mean, any other. Yeah, um, so many ways. It's kind of kind of like pasta. So many, oh mm -hmm. yeah, so many. so many ways. So, this so is, now she's going to do it right. Yes, now I'm going to do it right. This morning I was, my mind was well, so many places. Monday yeah. morning after the weekend, you know, you start... Did thinking. you have a wild and crazy weekend? Well, no, I just had a lot. We had to meet with a financial planner because my husband is retiring. So we're trying to make sure all of our ducks are in a row. So there's just a lot going on in my and head. And he can't wait. 
He cannot wait. From the uh, I'm from happy taping, for him. We're, he's at 23 days working days. <laughs> Not that we're counting or anything. Does he have a thing on the wall? No, no but it's hot Women do and that. he's tired. Women do that so yeah. much. It's, it's all in his mind. He's tired, so he's just ready. Okay, okay what do you so, want next? So we'll do the yogurt. What's this? That's yogurt. That's two-thirds cup this? plain yogurt. That's sour cream. Oh, okay. Do you want this? Sure. Yeah, I want to feel useful here. Right. She feels like she needs to do something. So. Yeah. And something then we have a half a cup of milk. Mm -hmm. And then sour cream mm -hmm. is a quarter of a cup. I'm going to mix this together, and then I'm going to put in a half a cup of chives. All righty. Do you want to sp spray the parchment paper for me? You spray it? I don't know. The spray is out. There's parchment paper. We'll spray it. It's not going to hurt anything. This is a nice sticky dough, too. So, And you don't want to overwork it, so let's get those chives in there. Because that will just make a tough biscuit. I don't want a tough biscuit. Look at that. This is just a good... Mm -hmm. Yummy, different. If you had soup and then oh you boy. serve these with soup. Some homemade oh, soup. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. I love making chicken noodle soup. And now I'm. I've never made chicken soup. I make a lot of vegetable soup. Yeah. Oh, this would be good with that too. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you just take quarter, where's my other spoon? Like quarter cup dollops. You don't have to roll it out. You don't have right. to do all that. And you're baking it at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. And look well, how beautiful they are. Uh, my mother always rolled them out. Yeah. You know. This would be way too sticky to do that. Mm -hmm. So am I because tasting? Because of the or, yogurt probably yeah. and the milk. Am I tasting? Are you tasting? Who's tasting today? Are you tasting today? I can't taste it. I've got okay. a... Okay. That's what I was asking. Okay. Okay. Go on some dental they, stuff. They came out pretty good for me messing up this morning, mm -hmm. I think. They're good? They are. Those rival red lobster cheddar biscuits. Like, we're geniuses. So good. Yeah. We should have. That's our, delicious. We should have our show on the nice food crunchy network. bottom. Mm hmm. These are really good. Yeah, 400 degrees, 15 I minutes. I know because um, so I good. have. Uh, you're talking about red lobster, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have gone in there and said, I want some cheese biscuits now, and then I'll order later. And they come running with them. She says, I am Arthleen Rivy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like who? Arthleen who? Anyway, do you want this recipe? Uh, we'll be glad to get it to you. There's a number of ways you can get it, so take your pick. They're all coming up. And after that, I hope you heard uh, Joe Turnham on the last program, but um, if not, you'll enjoy him very much on this program and think about this book. It's an awesome book. It'll bless your life. So stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Joe Turnham, thank you for hanging around. Oh, my pleasure. This book is too big for just one program. Oh. I certainly hope our viewers heard uh, yesterday, because I think we just kind of laid the ground for it. But basically, uh, I'll let you describe the book, in case, you know, the new viewers. Well, f first of all, it's a timeless, right? So I'm not dealing with current events. I'm dealing with the leaders of, of faith from Old Testament to New Testament. So read through the scripture. It's a title, a subtitle, a featured scripture, background scripture, four or five paragraphs of text, and a prayer each day that we can invoke uh, for, for whatever circumstance we have. And it's a, it's a reference type book. It's not just a daily devotional. So I think you, your, your, your viewers will find a lot of uh, purpose in yes, the book. Uh I feel it's absolutely for anybody. Before before we uh, came on the air, we were talking about something, and it uh, really uh, impressed me what you said about what Jesus, Jesus was quite a leader, we could say that, but what he did before he made a very important decision. Yes, the, the, the title, Leading from Our Knees, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit hit me with it because in Luke 8, uh, it says, Jesus went into a mountain, and all night he prayed. 
And when he descended from the mountain, among the apostles, he chose 12. So we really don't know what the decision model was there, but we know what Christ did before he made the big decision of leadership, choosing the disciples. He prayed it was all night. It was bathed in prayer. He, he was all, all night. night. Yeah. Yeah. And at Gethsemane, he prayed. Mm -hmm. So Christ himself set the mm -hmm. leadership by example of leading from our knees. If Christ did it, all of us must hit our knees, either physically or in our hearts. We have to take the humility and take it to the throne of God and let God direct our paths. And also, if a leader takes that path, there's not much of an opportunity for pride, and some of the obnoxious things we can no. see in a leader. Uh, no, no. And, and you asked me what were some of the qualities. Certainly a sense of purpose and calling and knowledge, but more than anything else, a, a, a peace and humility. Someone, and, and even, even taking it to an extreme, somebody that has a sense of humor, self-deprecating, people mm -hmm. that can criticize themselves or, or, or take a shot from their buddies or friends, uh, somebody I really want to follow. Absolutely, and those that are offended at everything. Oh, my goodness, no. Kind of bore me, okay. Um, throughout Scripture, do you find a common thread in the leaders that God raised up? Uh, and you begin with Genesis, and you go through Revelation in this book. Um, is there a commonality in all of them? Well, there's a commonality in the sense that God gets the message to those individuals, this is something I've called you for a task. Mm -hmm. And this is something else I think we can get confused. Getting called to be a leader isn't necessarily a lifetime thing. You know, mm -hmm. John the Baptist had a very specific purpose. He was to make the way for the Lord. Then he decreased, Christ increased. I think many leaders today fail because they stay too long mm -hmm. or, they, or they need to move on to another mission. Um, the one common thread, though, I think is obedience. You know, you, mm -hmm. you know now some, God has to beat the obedience uh, <laughs> metaphorically into some of them, like Jonah in the belly of the whale. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, some people just don't feel worthy of a calling. Um, or Moses, uh, Jeremiah and Aaron. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm a man of, of slow speech, and, and John the Baptist didn't feel worthy to baptize Christ. And we, we, we were talking off air a minute ago about... Um, uh, suffering. And I think too many times uh, that we see leadership, well, what do I get? What's the pay? You know, what are the, what are the accolades the benefits, that I'm going to yeah. get? Do I get a big corner office? Mm -hmm. and, and God often calls us to journeys of suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not being whipped and hung on the cross, but maybe ostracism from friends or, or even family members. I don't know many missionaries that accepted the call to the mission field of some type where there weren't skeptics in their own family. <gasps> Do you know what's in that land? Do you know the, the danger that confronts you? Oh, well, you've got to go back and get a master's degree in, in divinity, or you've got to, you've got to learn how to, 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 to do something that is, that, is, that is nasty, and you couldn't clean up your room when you were growing up. Let God take care of those things. But leadership is often not, not, not sanitary and easy. It's, it's a bit messy, and, but, you know, God will give you great benefits. And if, if I think on this side of heaven and, and certainly in heaven, um, we're in the crowns that we can cast down to the, to the throne and the feet of the Lord when we get there. I was just thinking of Mother Teresa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, she embodied so many of these attributes. Absolutely. Um, do you have a favorite leader in the Bible? I do. Um, I, I, I really love Joseph, uh, obviously. I, I love Christ, but I, I think that um, I, I like Daniel and Joseph uh, specifically because they were, they were taken out of their country, out of their comfort zones, and they, they did great things in great adversity. And I think uh, in my own life, I've had to do great things in great adversity. And many times... Uh, you don't get rewarded for it. That's where it's forged, though. It is forged there. Yeah. It's forged um, in adversity. Was it A.W. Tozer said, God can never use any man greatly until he's hurt him deeply. That's right. And that, that's kind of, that is kind of a pattern. I want to re, I want to re, uh, go over something that we did on the last show. 
Um, right. I think we opened with it, but the, the greatest leader of all is the father, father in the home. Without question. Mm -hmm. And uh, our program is called Home Keepers, and I, maybe a lot of the ladies are watching, but there are a lot of women can do to, to encourage good leadership <coughs> and all, and really mm -hmm. give that father a place of prominence in the home. It's very important. Well, and, and many of us have to be fathers to the fatherless. They're, 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 look at our jails, look, our prisons. There's a mission field for, for fathers. Mm -hmm. And metaphorically, you don't have to be a biological father to be a father. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can be a father to the fatherless. You can be a prayer warrior. You can be an intercessor. You can be mm -hmm. a contributor. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> are there any world leaders, say, in the last <clears throat> 50 more years, that you uh, think of? <clears throat> well, I mean, you, you know, uh, you, 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 see the, you see the Kings, the Gandhis. You s certainly see uh, someone I grew up with, Billy Graham, an evangelist. Mm -hmm. uh, to my knowledge, Billy Graham never had any scent of, of ill repute or, or anything. He was, he was very careful about that. He's grounded in his, in, his, in, his, in his family. And, you know, I think probably the greatest leaders are people you never heard of. My father was a great, great, great leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he had that sense of humility and purpose, uh, decorated war veteran and established a business and was in, in political and public life for many years. And uh, but but gave more than he ever received, and I think uh, in in my own life, my father is my great role model. And and you really in in life, if you're a father and your your children want to emulate you, you've lived a great life. That is, <clears throat> when I thought of that question, I thought of Churchill, who um, oh yeah, immovable, 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 uh, and I thought of Harry Truman. Oh yeah, I. Um, my dad was a pastor in Kansas City for 19 years, and I've seen I've seen Truman, I've seen his house and all. And <clears throat> but he once said he's kind of a rough guy, but you know most of those people back in that age they did grow up in Sunday school, <laughs> and I remember him saying if people would just follow the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount. Well, and he uh, made the most difficult decision probably in any president's life. You, you, you talk to us. We, we get hung up on conservative and liberal. Yeah. And, a, and a pastor came to me one time and he said, Joe, I'm going to tell you this. You can plagiarize it and say it's your own. <laughs> so I have, but I usually give Brother Bob, who's now gone. He says, he says, Joe, when somebody asks you if you're a liberal or conservative, here's the answer you should give. He says, I am as conservative as the Word of God, and I'm as liberal as the love of God. Mm -hmm. So, am I a liberal or a conservative? You know, you mix them up. Mix them up. You should mix them up, and and in yeah. the right in the right dose at the right time. But I, when I was looking at your book, I was I was looking at the history that I know, and the great great history of huge huge drama, and some of the men there, and it's obvious uh, that they they had some kind of religious training. Oh yeah. That had a, an effect on on how they were leading. Oh, oh, ab absolutely. And, and I think we see it. We talked about the circuit riders that came down. I'm from Alabama. And most, mm. most of the churches and the communities were established by circuit riders that would come and yes. establish a Methodist, uh, yeah, Pentecostal, uh, mm -hmm. a Presbyterian church in a particular community. They would, they would come around that and from there would flare out and railroads would come. So many times it, it was a circuit riding pastor that, that was planting the seeds of settlement throughout the southeast. I had a grandfather who <clears throat> was a circuit riding preacher. I never met him. He went to heaven before I was born. Um, but I've often thought about all those individuals, indi uh, the people that you can't see anymore, oh. invisible people. Uh, that changed my life forever because oh, I'm his grandchild. A absolutely. And, you know, somebody, somebody said, well, who's the next president going to be? And I said, well, who's the 21st president? Mm -hmm. You know, who, you, know, you forget that these, mm -hmm. the persons, people of history, I tell also everybody that, that the kings, the queens, the princes are but the footstool of God. And, and for us to understand that 
if we're living in the kingdom of God, it's an eternal flux and that we are to be obedient in our few years or few tasks that we're given. And if we're obedient, then, then the purposes of heaven will, indru- will indwell and everything that we do will be put in the heat of the throne of God, whether it be good or for whether it be bad. So let, let our words and let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, the tasks that we do reflect that uh, every day. If you've just joined me, I'm talking to Joe Turnham, who is the author of this wonderful book. Leading from our knees, you can get it through the website, you can get it at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and places like that. Okay, I uh, strongly recommend it for anyone, but I would certainly think any pastor, Sunday school leader, teacher, even if you've got the little kids, you could really benefit from this. And it's got 365 messages in it, one for every day of the year. And um, I cannot, I promise you, I cannot just recommend it highly enough. Uh, the ultimate leader, of course, is Jesus. Mm. What, what would be the first thing you'd say about him? Well, Jesus knew what his mission was. He, he came here. And Whoa, there's he, a lot of people who don't know. He, 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 he came and he, he gave it up. He left, he left the throne of heaven to come here and to do a task. And he knew he'd suffer, but he also he mm-hmm. also had an eternal he had an eternal vision of everything he did, you know. Even before even before he went to the cross, he not only prayed for everybody around him. Then he prayed for all future generations that they would be saved. Oh, they would they would be saved from Satan. That they would be redeemed. You know that not one would perish, but that all would find the light. And he was a revealer of the truth. And I think in our days today, we have to reveal the truth as we know it and as God gives it to us, mm-hmm. uh, even if it's making your bed in the morning and, and cutting the water off after you brush your teeth or yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, <laughs> uh, yes, sir, no, sir. Little, little, little things go a long, long way in life. Mm-hmm. And if you're that leper that got healed, if, if you're that person that mm-hmm. go back and say mm-hmm. thank you, mm-hmm. <laughs> say thank you. That is so important in our world today. Uh, shouldn't, shouldn't each of us think uh, of ourselves as leader, a leader? Uh, because you never know. Somebody's watching. Somebody's noticing you oh, and what yeah. you're doing. Oh, yeah. I mean. It's a responsibility. We all preach a sermon every, every day and we never mm-hmm. use words. Mm-hmm. And, and I think many people look for a smile. They, they, they look for have a nice day. Uh, uh, you know. Be careful around strangers, lest you entertain angels unawares. Many times, I think. Many times, I think God puts us in circumstances that we may be the only light of love that people ever see. And so, if it's and, and many times people are invisible. You have a great team behind the camera here mm-hmm. at your show. Well, you got the best. Uh, you got the best. And and in every situation, there are great people behind the scenes that need affirmation, that need need love and lifting up. So let's all find somebody today that we can lift up. Be be balcony people. Let's cheer for cheer for others in life and do it with a heart, the love, and the passion of our living Lord. And we mentioned this on the last program, the greatest leadership of all, and that is one thing we try to do on this program is your family. You lead them. You make sure they're in Sunday school every Sunday. You make sure they're in Christian organizations and things that will make them grow. There's nothing more important. I thank God. My sister and I were talking about that. We're both great grandmothers. And uh, how thankful that they had us in church all the time. It's Absolutely. paying big dividends now. Well, and when you can't take them to church anymore, my mother told me one time she was on the sofa, she was on a walker, she could no longer do. She says, she says, son, I love you so much. I can't do anything for you. I can't give you anything else. But she <laughs> says, I pray for you every day. Amen. And I'm thinking, how many life situations was I jerked out of the fire like uh a Meshach and Abednego? How many times in the lion's den of life mm-hmm. has my mother's prayer from her hospital bed, rescued Amen. me. So to, to the to the great grandmothers that are listening today, pray, pray, pray without ceasing, pray. Mm-hmm. I pray for every family member every morning. Amen. And um, it's the greatest leadership responsibility mm-hmm. that we're that we're tasked with as people of faith is to be prayer mm-hmm. warriors. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to thank you for writing a wonderful thank book. You. Let me mention it one more time. I'll show it to you. Leading from your knees, it, 
it almost looked <laughs> like an encyclopedia yeah. when I got it. <laughs> it grabbed me. Um, and we've had the website up. You can get it uh, in other places like Amazon, Barnes & Noble. But I think it's a life changer. And we certainly need some of the kind of leadership that was in the scripture. And he has laid it out beautifully. And it's not rocket science. <laughs> They, these are principles that every single one of us can adopt into our lives. And you know what? Eternity is going to re reveal all the results of that. Thank you again for coming. Thank you. And it's if you're in pleasure. the area again, come, of come, course. On, come on over. Absolutely. Yes, and we'll. Do you, do you like to cook? Absolutely. Okay, we'll let you cook. We'll let you cook. Okay, stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, Fred, I've lived a long time and never seen America like it is now. I'd like to remind you that we are offering you the book, America at the Crossroads by Dr. George Barna. And he is our American statistician. And so he doesn't pull numbers out of the air. What you'll read in that book will be very, very honest and very accurate. Uh, it's your, yours for a gift of $25 to the ministry. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate every single dime you send. Uh, because we want to keep coming into your home. So you can call 1-800-229-0059 or write to me at Box 6922 in Clearwater, 33758, and uh, we'll get it out to you. I just can't tell you how much I have enjoyed this book, Leading from Our Knees. I've read, read quite a bit of it and added it to my morning reading before I come to the office to always have my own devotions. And I read uh, Carol Kent's book, He Holds My Hand, and I read this one, and I read some scripture, and pray for my family, and it, the day wouldn't be right if I didn't do that every morning. I just have to do it. And you know what? I believe God answers prayer, and I believe when you pray for your family, He hears you, and He loves your family more than you do, and He will go to work for you. You just ask Him to. Hey, join me next time. Remembering? No higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.